welcome to Desolate Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to my desk. Happy Sunday. Um, it's been a super busy week. A lot of revisions here at The Fruit. Um, but any updates, Mr. Lady? Anything you want to tell people before we look no, at No, regular week of schedules. Uh, regularly week of schedules. Regularly. We're going to have schedules this week, everyone. Regularly uh, week We've week. scheduled the schedules. Uh, yeah. No, we're just in uh, revision and new product development as fast as we possibly can. Um, Adafruit was in the news. Check out adafruit.com slash press. You can see the feedback from um, the buying population of folks who want fairness for purchasing High demand things like Raspberry Pi. So uh, Eben, the uh, founder of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and more, said way to go Adafruit, and uh, others really liked it. So people are able to get the Raspberry Pis. If you want to get ahead of something, make sure you have an account on Adafruit, verify it with email, and then put on two-factor authentication. Do not wait till you get the notification. Yeah. Because and then it's going to take you like a minute or two to set it up. Do it ahead of time and stay logged in because we'll keep you logged in for two yeah. weeks. You know, if you have um, cookies uh, allowed. So. so this has helped out a lot. Yeah. And uh, the educators have got back to us. They're like, finally, a fair way. There's no easy solution to this. Um, there's no thing that'll just work. Um, it's a combination of lots of different things. So uh, that's the latest. So what's going on on your desk, Lady Ada? Okay. Well, first up, um, let's go to the computer. Because uh, we got a bunch of revisions that we got in. Um People have watched me work on these revisions. Um, so the ESP32 S2 Feather uh, with BME and then the one without BME 280 is going to be in the shop soon. Um, both of these uh, revise the uh, power to the STEM IQT board. They fixed it. So um, just watch out depending on which version you have. Um, you might have to set a pin high or low to enable the QT port and the pull-ups. Um, the uh, ESP32 S2 QD Pi also got revised uh, with the UFL. This also improves the low power. STEM QTification of the ADXL 345, a really old uh, sensor board, um, but finally getting um, a cleanup revision. Uh, it's been, you know, it's one of our first boards that we've had. It's uh, product number 1231, uh, so quite old. Uh, the BLE sniffer also getting revised to use the CP2102N, not the CP2104. Um, ditto the Pi UART, also uh, USB-C and CP2102N, and the, the PCF8523, uh, um, we showed this off um, a few weeks ago uh, doing the revision. Um, the board now comes with uh, either SOIC or VSON version of the chip. Um, the SOIC version, you know, might be a couple months out, so uh, the VSON version, or HVSON, um, Pin compatible, basically, you know, function compatible, uh, just slightly different shape, but um, we just crammed onto the board and made the crystal smaller, and uh, we're, we're good to go. So um, these sold out, but we'll have more, and then uh, a couple new products on the way, but um, a lot of revisions. Uh, we're fighting really hard to keep 90% um, of the products that we make in stock. Um, you know, that's our, that's our goal, and uh, we're, we're trying really hard to do it. Um, we, we did get a couple more chips that we've been desperately trying to, you know, we've been out of stock for a year on and like we slowly dwindled through our supply. So um, we're getting a, a restock of those and we'll be able to um, get, I think, some IMUs uh, back into the store uh, and some sensors. So that's good. Um, also, while this is happening, I also checked out there's some uh, nifty uh, new chips um, that I saw. So uh, VL53L4CX. Um, this is in stock at DigiKey, and this is yet yet another time of flight sensor. Uh, they keep making these, uh, and I keep buying them. So uh, this chip, um, what's nice about it is it's got a six meter range compared to the uh, VL53L51CX, I think, which has a four meter max. So this one has a six meter max range. Um, you know, fairly good price, about three bucks or so in quantity. Uh, so it's kind of neat. Also got samples of this, uh, the LPS28. There's not a lot in stock, but you know I got enough to prototype with. Um, this is interesting because this is a barometric pressure sensor that can uh, do up to 4,000 uh, hectopascals HPA. Um, usually uh, 1060 or so is the max. That's kind of like uh, you know sea level pressure, a little bit below sea level pressure. Um, so this one can do four times as high pressure, so it could be could be good for underwater uh, use cases. I think it was designed for like underwater watches. It's also uh, 
you know, waterproof, not the whole body of it, just the, um, the gel um, insert for it. So um, this interesting sensor, I kind of quickly put together a breakout of stomach UT for the sensor. I also got um, some on the overhead. Maybe, maybe you'll check it out. So yeah, I got some of these samples. Uh, so this is the, it's so tiny. But this is the uh, the LPS 28. So it does have a little, you know, it has a little um, ring that you can, you know, put a tube on. So it's not flat, it's got a little uh, ferrule on it. Um, but uh, anyways, I got that. And then I did get some of the VL53L CX's and I swapped out, um, I just hot aired off, or maybe I think Dano or Vance did, um, and replaced it. And I tried out this chip, so it's actually multi-target and up to uh, six meter range. So, so that's good. Any questions, Phil? No. Okay. So far so good. Um, going. Yeah. Next up, uh, also I got uh, this motor driver chip, which I thought was kind of neat, the DRV 8231, this one is um, uh, 33 volts and 3.7 amps. Uh, we're having trouble getting some H bridges from TI, so that might be a good alternative. Um, is there anything else on the list for me to cover? No, we were gonna show this book. I got okay. this book from 1969. This is uh, Computers, Their History and How They Work. But this book came out in 1969, so basically the history was like, here's the computer that we have at this time. Yeah. <laughs> we have like four of them. Uh, but it's a cool book, and we're going to scan it in because I don't think there's any uh, archive.org uh, availability of this or something online. Yeah. Um, but it has a lot of interesting concepts that are still used to this day. Yeah, like they're like, here's binary. Um, and they have, you know, old machines and, yeah. and punch tapes and stuff. I'm going to put a link in the, the chat. So folk, there, There's one blog post I found online that someone, no one talked about. Uh, yeah, this talks about uh, checks and how they use magnetic ink to read uh, the check number. So, you know, stuff that still happens now. Like, we still, I mean, a lot of people don't use checks anymore, but, um, you know, you still, you know, once in a while you write checks, maybe your rent, you'll write as a check. We used uh, cash at the Cracker Barrel. Uh, Lady and I, I took Lady A to the Cracker Barrel on Saturday. She's never been to the Cracker Barrel. I took her there, and we paid in cash. Yeah. Cash. This is, like, a flow chart, so it's kind of cool. And they're like, here's symbols. This is a punch card symbol. This is a perforated tape. A communications link. I like that. Yeah. Like, zing, zing. It's a cool logo. Um, it's not that many pages either because there isn't that much history. Yeah. So I thought, I thought it was cool as they had, a, they had a whole section on core memory. And so this actually kind of got me uh, interested. I looked up because it's like quite a bit, actually. They have quite a few pages on core memory and they have some nice photos. Um, you know, I looked up and there's people who still make uh, core memory um, from scratch, you can you know you you can do it with just uh, some wire and some ferrite cores. Um, so maybe we can go back to the computer, and I can so um, so like this person you know bought some uh, core. They you know, they they basically used um, you have to use a really powerful transmitter. So they used a uh, SN five seven five. Huh. <coughs> Pardon me, which is a. Um, I think it's actually a um, H bridge, so you need to use quite you know a powerful driver um, to drive the two lines for whether you want a zero or one, and then the sense the sense wire is um, is much lower power, and they just they just did it with some uh, assembly and some transistors, and this is like you know they have like one one bit of core memory. So I thought um, it could be neat to show you know and this is they they have some um, pulse they showed the pulses look like as well. Um, and then there's uh, computerhistory.org has a um, whole section on core memory, um, including, I guess this is Mr. Wang of Wang Computers. It's cool. And, uh, you know, the core is a core memory uh, sample brochure from Fabrotech Computer Systems. Um, so I thought for the, for, you know, INMPI, I could show, oh, wait, there's one more chip. I found this. It's interesting, a um, environmental gas sensor. That I might check out, but I thought it'd be cool to show. Um, yeah, for for great search, we'll, finding uh, maybe not you know the smallest core uh, memory toroids, but 
Um, you know, uh, ferrite cores are, are handy for all sorts of things. So, yeah. um, and then we'll uh, got a, a question we'll do right after Great Search. So okay, great. Let's, uh, let's kick it off uh, the theme song that's in our heads permanently now during this part shortage. The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lady Ada uses her power of engineering every single week to find the parts that you need, and boy, do we got to find some parts. <laughs> There's a lot of parts finding All right, so in my let, life. So if someone wanted to find this specifically from, uh, they read this book and they're like, oh, you know, what's going on with uh Yeah, so this is, I was, I was showing this earlier, but um, this has a whole section on core memory yeah. and how to build it and how it works. And um, so I start to look online because, you know, I, I've always heard people uh, make core memory. Um, let's go to the computer. Uh, so, um, you know, you make it by getting some magnet wire, some thick magnet wire, some thin sense magnet wire that's woven through, and then um, these little magnetic rings. And, and the way that these rings twist uh, will... Um, determine whether the bit stored is zero or one. So, you know, nowadays um, we read and write memory by putting charge on a um, capacitive gate for a transistor, um, and then we read that charge um, later. And, um, you know, that, that's basically how SRAM and DRAM work, and, and it uses a ton less power, and it's a lot faster than, than magnetic core memory. But I think it's funny that, you know, it's like now we use capacitive storage, but we used to use inductive storage in a sense. Um, so while, you know, people don't make core memory and the Fabritech computer probably doesn't have, uh, you know, these, these ferrite cores available anymore, although like these are amazingly tiny, only, uh, 14 mil, um, which means you could cram, you know, so much core memory into like, you know, a, a square inch. Um, but you know, people, you know, people need to store data and, you know, if you want to store dynamic information, this was how it was done before, uh, we came up with a capacitive storage. Um, so let's go to DigiKey because, uh, you know, even if you're not uh, making core memory, it is useful to uh, know that you can get ferrite cores at DigiKey. I used to wind my own inductors um, for class or because I was making an amplifier, you know, or something or a filter. Um, I'd, and I'd wind my own inductors. Um, so let's, uh, let's search for... Um, Ferrite core. So they're actually not called cores anymore. They're called toroids. I mean, they are they are called cores. Sorry. Um, sorry, I was searching for magnetic core. They're not called magnetic core. They're called ferrite core. And uh, ferrite cores. Uh, they're actually, let's see. There's a whole there's a whole section called uh, oh magnetics transformer and inductor components. This is kind of handy. There's three um, sections. There's the core. There's the magnet wire that spools around, and uh, and the bobbins, these are, the, you know, holders, things that, you know, you can store your um, beautifully made inductor on. So I've never, I've never purchased these, but uh, maybe one day we'll, we'll cover these on the Great Search. Anyways, we're looking for a uh, ferrite cores. And there's all sorts of kinds, like there's pieces. And, you know, ferrite cores, again, they're made, for, they're used for a couple different things. One, you're making your own inductor. Uh, you're making your own transformer. Um, while, you know, in, in general, you tend to purchase these pre-made, um, there are times when you really have to uh, DIY it for some reason or you're prototyping and you want to uh, try different inductances instead of like soldering in different inductors, you'd actually just change the number of uh, coils in your wire. Um, of course, they're also really handy for uh, reducing EMI. Um, you know, the, the, uh, having a magnetic core around a wire, you've seen them, you've had like USB cable with a big lump in it. Um, that reduces the amount of um, electromagnetic interference. So, um, used for a couple of things, you know, there's, and more, you know, all sorts of shieldings. Um, I don't know what this E-shape is for, maybe also for maybe ribbon wire, I don't know. Um, actually kind of neat, we have uh, the Apple II disk drive, it has a gigantic uh, chunk of um, ferrite core material on the, uh, on the cable as well. Um, because there's a non-differential, so lots of EMI. So these are all very neat, but what we really want is like this kind, which is called a, uh, a toroid. Um, it's a donut shape, but um, they're, they're called a toroid type. So let's, let's look for, uh, also, let's also look for only active ones. And then, you know, there are a lot of um, permeability and um, 
cross section, we're not going to care about that. We're actually just going to look for the smallest possible one for, again, DIY um, core memory. So let's find where the shape is. Ah, core type. So we're going to go for toroid type. Boom. Okay, so there's a couple hundred of these, but yeah, now we're talking. These are all the same shape and size. And we want the minimum size available, um, which would be the diameter. So they do come quite small. I mean, you can get them as small as, um, you know, a tenth of an inch. Let's look up to about, uh, oh, about five millimeters maximum. Um, again, we're not going to make the, the tiniest um, ferret memory, but... Uh, if you're just DIYing at home. Okay, so let's see what's available. So there's a lot of different ones. Some have photos, some don't, but you know, we don't really need the photo. Let's look at them by diameter size. So I just sorted, oops, I went down to the, um, the diameter and I sorted up by diameter. Uh, so unfortunately, some of the smallest ones are not available. Um, so the smallest available one that is um, in stock. So if we wanted to filter by in stock, not a lot in stock, but the ones that are available for um, size three millimeters, the smallest, and it would be this one. So there's no photo, but uh, not too scary because we kind of know what these look like. <clears throat> there is um, a data sheet and uh, it looks like this. So yeah, it's just a little, little toroid that we can use. Um, and if you want a photo, because you want to really, I, I, sometimes I like to see what I'm buying. Hold on. Uh oh, my internet is. Do we run out of internet? Oh, no, my internet's not interneting. Oh, wait, there it goes. Okay. Um, the internet smallest shortage, one, internet supply chain. I know. The smallest one that has a photo is this one. And there's also a lot in stock. Um, we can look at a, a 360, um, but uh, you know, look if you if you need a, a small little toroid, you could you know four millimeters is. Let's see, I always like to compare. Yeah, so like three millimeters, you could you know you, if you wanted to make a small, um, uh, you know, a, a tiny little uh, core memory sheet, you could probably use that. Four millimeters is not that much bigger, so either one would be good. And they're both um, pretty inexpensive. Look, a zoom in. I'm zooming in. Okay, this is now quite big. Um, but both are pretty inexpensive. You can get them, they're about 10, 15 cents a piece. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how many people out there are interested in making um, the right memory, but, you know, if you are making a very small inductor, um, like a Balin, for like ethernet um, or you know for a small boost converter or uh, filtering for like a class D amplifier um, you can still find these quite handy um, you know like put a little bit of uh, magnet wire through them and you know you've got a very small inductance uh, high current inductor um, for sure definitely more high current than a, a chip inductor so I uh, you know I don't know if I'm going to actually make a um, a piece of core memory, but this is, oh, my internet's down again. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, I don't know. The internet's being, it was slow. There you oh, go. Yeah. Um, Civil, oh, no. Civilization. Here you go. Okay, so this is the uh, product I picked for the INMPI. So this, this inductor, I liked how it has a little three model um, available, but they also have tons in stock. So you can make up to, you know, basically 10 kilobytes of core memory uh, using what's in stock at DigiKey right now. How okay. many is that? And that is a great search. All right, so let's uh, do a couple of questions that came in. Sure. Uh, question, the Adafruit TSC 207 I squared C resistive touchscreen controller, would it be horrible to use liquid electrical tape over the ribbon to connect the touchscreen for a little support from it coming out. Anything better to use? Um, well, you shouldn't have any pressure on it, but you could just use some tape. Okay, and then some picks from Cracker Barrel, the lemon uh, pepper grilled trout, and uh, Mama's blueberry pancakes. Okay, next time. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see if I've got anything else here. 
Uh, yeah, someone noted that the core memory was manufactured by hand by women during the 50s. Yes. Yeah. So you um, want to you old, weave your own. Here's a little bit of a tip. Old UPSs are a good place to scavenge high-gauge wire and larger toroids. Mm, that's a good idea. That's a good tip. You're, you're going to get them there for sure. There's big power supplies. They're going to have lots of coils. Yeah. And then I don't quite get this question, but maybe we can try. Um, hello, lady. I have a question. You program in the Texas devices, Beaglebone, and Tiva C series or other industrial certification and use no Arduino and Raspberry. Don't I think there is a translation? Yeah, I don't issue actually do that much Beaglebone. We do Raspberry uh, Pi, but you can use Circuit Python with Beaglebone. I would like to refer to Beaglebone as Texas devices. The Texas devices, um, yeah. I think it's a translation issue too. I think they yeah. They I think they it. cut and pasted it. In I don't know what the question is, but um, I think we actually are going to get some Beagle Bones in stock. Also, I think they just uh, they're, they're recently shipped. Yeah. So you, know, right. you can't get Raspberry Pi. You can get a Beagle Bone. All right, and I think that is all of the Desk of Ladyata questions for tonight. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks, we'll be everybody. doing our shows during the week. We have lots of surprises in the store and more. Thank you so much for being part of this adventure with us every single week. Chicken fried chicken. Yeah, oh, and then um, one little side note, um, you know, for our community here who play, pays close attention. So we were asked, like, hey, like, what is Adafruit doing to maybe solve world peace? There's, um, you know, conflict in uh, Ukraine right now. And so uh, right now we put up a resource, uh, adafruit.com slash Russia, and that's available uh, for everyone. But also if you go to our website from Russia, it goes directly there. It has mirrors for downloading Wikipedia, Tor, uh, ways to get around the government censorship so people in Russia, the population, can get information that they know is going on. And then also a message from uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the State Department. They work together and just trying to get some information and news out to them. And I was uh, thinking how, what a remarkable time when Arnold Schwarzenegger is now the, uh, the only person that can help bring in world peace uh, on a global stage. So check it out. Um, we're still working on more stuff. Uh, so far, so good as far as the feedback from some of the people on the ground there. Uh, they need help with things like access. So uh, I don't know how this is going to end, but I'm hoping it will end with everybody coming together so we can all build and make stuff as one. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.